स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So my Leonard Jones, my Leonard Jones potential, also known as, also known as the LJ potential. This is how we will term, is, is defined as the interaction energy or the potential function phi of rho to be minus a of rho times rho to the power minus m plus b of rho. Times rho to the power minus n, okay, where where my a represents my a represents the attractive the attractive uh, component the attractive component because of the minus sign, and b represents the repulsive the repulsive component, okay, because of the plus sign, okay, so then. And my my rho is the distance distance between uh, between two atoms or the atoms under consideration or the structures under consideration, and then uh, typically uh, typically uh, these coefficients m n these are natural numbers. So sometimes these are also called as the Leonard Jones m n potential. Uh, which tells us what is the strength of the attractive as well as the strength of the repulsive components of the the potential okay so for example for example if my m is equal to 6 and n is equal to 12 uh, which is the most common uh, common occurrence of Lem leonard jones potential in almost all the physical models that are used Also known as the six twelve LJ potential. Okay. Right. So, and so let me term is at as example A. Another potential that is frequently used is the five ten potential. For example, to describe hydrogen bonding. Okay, hydrogen, hydrogen bonding. Uh, also, well, the five twelve, but uh, well, the hydrogen bonding, not this five twelve, but uh, in fact, ten uh, twelve potential. Sorry about that. So, so this is the ten twelve LJ potential. Okay, frequently used to model the hydrogen bonding. For example, uh, so if I were to plot, if I were to plot the LJ potential. lj potential let us look at the plot right so i have i have rho times l of rho and notice that this is this is uh, let's see uh, if we were to plot the following function let's say phi of rho given by uh, 4 epsilon these are all constants epsilon minus Sigma by rho to the power six, so my a is sigma to the power six plus sigma by rho to the power twelve, where my epsilon and sigma are well sigma are constants, right? And they are real constants. Then, if I were to plot this LJ potential, I see that this looks like the following. okay so where we in this part of the potential we have the repulsion and in this part of the potential represents the attraction the attractive potential right so in particular we also see that well if i were to draw this slightly more carefully so this is like the following okay again well again so this is slightly uh, slanted and then it turns like this and it in fact it goes to zero as r goes to infinity 
Okay, we will see that. So, I for this potential we definitely have the minima and the minima here is the minima here is given by the epsilon, where epsilon is also known as the potential depth or the well depth, okay. uh, also known as the energy, the energy well depth. Okay. So, suppose I, in, I model my carbon nanotube with uh, Lj potential, then my well depth will denote this parameter epsilon as shown in this example. Okay. So, epsilon is the well depth and sigma, sigma is sigma is the distance from 0 to this minimum of the L j potential. So, sigma is sigma is the van der Waal distance, van der Waal, uh, van der Waal distance and it turns out to be uh, b by a to the power 1 by 6. Well, all we have to do is uh, just take the derivative of rho and set it equal to 0 and that will give me my my uh, rho star or critical value which is which is sigma okay okay so these are uh, this is a typical example of the lj potential that we will be using okay so we can see that van der waal interactions are are usually short range interaction why because uh, notice that as rho goes to infinity as rho goes to infinity the interaction nearly goes to zero right uh, so in fact i would say that the leonard jones potential represents a medium range interaction because uh, well short range repulsion but medium range attraction which means that if i have that rho goes to zero then i i can see that we are in the repulsive range if rho goes to infinity then it is weakly very weakly attractive okay and in the intermediate range we have some uh, we have some reasonable attraction via this potential. Okay. So, what I said is the following. So, van der Waal uh, van der Waal interaction in general van der Waal interaction energy in general is a short short range short range interaction energy uh, models models only nearest neighbor models only nearest neighbor neighbor interaction models only nearest neighbor interaction and ideally ideally modeled modeled by by lj potential we have seen that all these properties of van der waal interaction are quite appropriately captured by Lj potentials, okay. And uh, these are typically this van der Waal interaction energies are typically applied applied to non-bonded applied to non-bonded non-polar structures, okay. So these are very different than ionic interactions or covalent interactions, okay. So then let me start. Uh, our basic modeling effort by looking at the interaction of a point with a plane for example a carbon atom with a graphene sheet okay so i am going to uh, step by step build up the model where eventually we are going to look at the oscillatory mechanics of two carbon nano rods okay so let me look at the first of the example to discuss so find find the interaction energy the interaction energy e and and the van der Waal force the van der Waal force f d well f v d w for a single for a single carbon atom for a single carbon atom a distance a distance z from an infinite an infinite graphene sheet graphene sheet okay so what have we got is the following so we have uh, a graphene sheet where the sheet contains these tessellated hexagonal rings 
right and so on so forth. And then we have a carbon atom which is sitting on top well it is on top of this sheet and we want to model the interaction of this carbon atom with the sheet right. So, assume assume uh, to model this interaction let me place this carbon atom at a convenient location to the sheet. So, we are going to assume that the carbon atom the carbon atom coordinate is 0 0 z the carbon atom coordinate is 0 0 z and the position. So, this is z is the distance of the carbon atom from the sheet and the sheet is on the x y plane and and the position. So, these are my assumptions the position of the sheet the sheet is given by the x y plane x y 0 right. So, which means which means rho which is the distance between distance between the carbon atom rho which is the distance between the carbon atom and the graphene sheet is given by a square root of x square plus y square plus z square ok. So, that is my rho ok. So, then let me uh, let me model the interaction or the van der Waal interaction of this atom with the sheet using our Leonard Jones potential or the 6 12 potential ok. So, so using using Leonard Jones 6 12 potential 6 12 potential I see that my interaction energy is E which is eta eta of double integral eta of double integral from minus a by x square plus y square plus z square to the power uh, well this was half times 6 gives me to the power 3 right. So, this is this is my rho to the power 6 right. So, rho had a square root ok plus b times uh, x square plus y square plus z square to the power 6. So, uh, this is my rho to the power 12. So, 6 12 potential and times times d x d y ok. So, this is my interaction energy note that uh, eta here the constant sitting outside is the average average number of atoms atoms per per unit area of the graphene sheet ok graphene sheet. Uh, fine. So, we are calculating the average interaction energy ok. Now, all I have to do is to evaluate this double integral right. Uh, I can write down this double integral as eta times double integral well eta times negative a. So, assume that a and b uh, a and b are assume a and b are my constants. Okay. a and b are my constants. So, my uh, my integration is minus a i 3 plus b i 6 right and where where my i n is my double integral from minus infinity to infinity uh, times d x d y by x square plus y square plus z square to the power n ok. So, all I do is I evaluate I evaluate this i n for a general n plug n equal to 3 and 6. Notice that the, the factor x square plus y square plus z square tells us that we should use the cylindrical polar coordinates uh, z is fixed. So, the only variables in our integration are r and theta. So, we are going to use cylindrical polar coordinates with z fixed. So, so changing in fact changing to uh, changing to polar coordinates because z is fixed. I see that my i n turns out to be integral from 0 to 2 pi uh, d theta times integral r from 0 to infinity right times r dr divided by 
r square plus z square to the power n. Okay. And now this integration is fairly simple. So, let me write down the answer. This is pi by n minus 1 times z to the power 2 n minus 2. Right? Okay. So, that is my i n and then from here I can plug all these values and I see that my interaction energy is eta times pi times minus a by 2 z to the power 4 plus b times b by 5 z to the power 10. Right? Okay. So, from here I can calculate my van der Waal force, I need to differentiate with respect to z or the axial coordinate. So, my van der Waal my van der Waal force f v d w turns out to be minus partial e partial z which is pi eta times minus 4 a by 2 z to the power 5 plus 10 b by 5 z to the power 11 right which is also equal to uh, let me just rewrite the following. Uh, so, this is 2 pi eta times negative a by z to the power 5 plus b times z to the power 11. Okay. So, that is my van der Waal force. So, typically the values of these constants for a graphene sheet are, uh, are follows. So, typically for, uh, so again these are from standard physical chemistry textbooks. Typically for graphene sheets, I see that my a is given to be 17.4 electron volt, uh, electron volt angstrom 6 and b the constant is the quantity this uh, electron volt and my constant eta comes out to be 0 0.3812 atom per angstrom square. Okay? Okay. We see that uh, for all these, uh, for all these, uh, all these constants, uh, let me just quickly plot my interaction energy and and uh, and my force. So th my x coordinate is the axial component z, z is in angstrom, and typically I see that my interaction energy will be the following. If z is if z is uh, if z is positive, and if z is negative, I see that the interaction energy will be having the following. So, the interaction energy is an even function of z, right. So, these are my curves for E, right. And if I were to plot the force, I see that the force follows the following, the following curves. So, the force is also the maximum at the same point where the energy attains the minimum, right. So, F z and the force in the other half is as follows. So, this becomes the following. right? So, notice that, so these are my force curves, this one here. Okay? So, so what I am trying to show is, uh, my force curve is anti-symmetric because of the odd terms here and my, my energy curve is symmetric because of the even terms. And, and hence, we can see that the minimum or the maximum force is given by the minimum of the, the energy curve okay? and vice versa. Okay. So, then I, I would like to uh, go one step further and calculate the interaction energy of two parallel graphene sheets. Right? So, the next problem that I want to highlight, find the interaction energy of two parallel uh, parallel infinite two parallel infinite plates of graphene two parallel infinite plates of graphene at at a distance at a distance uh, z so the graphene sheets are separated by a well se separated i should write the word separated 
by a distance z right. Now, so we have two infinite sheets of graphene and I want to find out. So, these are all z tending to minus infinity z tending to infinity and I want to find the interaction of these two infinite sheets. Now, notice that when we found out the interaction of a point with the sheet we got a finite answer which means that if I were to, so the, the natural way to model this setup is we sum up the point sheet interaction. Now, on two infinite sheet there are infinitely many points which means that we are doing an infinite sum of a finite quantity or an infinite sum of the point sheet interaction and we expect the answer to be infinite. So, instead of finding the, the answer uh, that is the interaction energy of two infinite sheets, I am going to find out the answer as the interaction energy of two infinite sheet per unit area of the two sheets. Okay. So, I am going to I am going to find out the interaction energy per unit area to get a finite answer. Okay. So, as I just said the following the interaction energy uh, is an infinite sum infinite sum of a non vanishing of a non vanishing non vanishing term non vanishing term and it is infinite right is an infinite sum of a non vanishing term and it is infinite. So, we instead calculate the interaction energy per unit area. So, we calculate the interaction energy interaction energy per unit area. Okay. So, let me just introduce the concept of eta. So, I denote my number of atoms atoms per unit area the number of atoms per unit area as eta and and each atom interacts interacts each atom interacts interacts individually each atom interacts individually with the other plane with the other other plane okay now so which means which means that my interaction energy uh, per unit area per unit area let me denote it as e p u a per unit area e of per unit area will be uh, the answer it, that we found in example number 3. So, the answer was the answer was pi eta times this quantity times eta where eta is the number of atoms of the second sheet per unit area right. So, uh, so this is eta times E where E is found found in example 3 that we discussed few minutes back and let me write down the answer. So, this is pi eta square times minus a by 2 z to the power 4 plus b by 5 z to the power 10 right. Okay. So, we take we take a to be 15.2 b to be 24 these are typical values these are typical typical values of of graphene sheet interaction graphene sheet uh, interaction and what we find is the following we find that uh, we find uh, eta is the same so eta is same uh, eta is same as in example 3 that we have discussed few minutes back. We find that uh, the equilibrium spacing the equilibrium spacing between the two sheets. So, how can we find the equilibrium spacing between the two sheets the, the static equilibrium by minimizing the force right or finding the force or minimizing the energy. So, nature 
is going to provide us with the equilibrium when the energy of interaction is minimum right. So, it turns out that the equilibrium spacing between between two sheets between two sheets uh, given by p well uh, spacing let us say p v d w is denoted as the energy the derivative of the energy with respect to z e p u a differentiate and set equal to 0. From here I get that my equilibrium spacing z naught turns out to be b by a to the power 1 6 and that comes out to be 3.41 angstrom. Now, what is the what is the issue here? The issue is that experimentally the values that are reported by uh, by this uh, physical chemists that is the equilibrium on the equilibrium spacing of these sheets is slightly lower. So, experimentally uh, experimentally experimentally uh, z naught is reported to be uh, z naught is reported reported to be z naught equal to 3.35 angstrom right. So, z naught is reported to be 3.35 angstrom although close, but it is uh, it is roughly uh, it is quite a bit of uh, you know different than the values that we have found through our model. So, this question that is asked is where is the discrepancy in our model and the discrepancy lies in the structure of graphene itself. We know that graphene uh, has parallel sheets which are almost equidistant apart. So, which means that any point on one sheet of the graphene not only interacts with its nearest graphene sheet, but also interacts with all the other graphene sheets which are at distance z, 2 z, 3 z, 4 z and so on and so forth. So, we must include all those uh, other graphene sheets which are at a larger and larger distance away from the sheet under consideration. Okay. So, so this is the issue that I want to highlight. So, the reason for the discrepancy the reason for the discrepancy discrepancy uh, is that graphite graphite atoms interact graphite atoms interact not only not only with with its nearest neighbor not only with its nearest neighbor neighbor planes but but with all other planes not only with its nearest neighbor planes but with all other planes okay so which means that we have to we have to incorporate the effect of all other graph graphite sheets that we are we have ignored which are lying parallel to each other right so so the the, the new model in our graphene structure is we assume the assume that there exists an infinite sheet there exists an infinite sheet such that the number of planes the number of planes are all separated separated by the same distance they are all separated by the same distance let me call this distance as z so one sheet is uh, separated from the central sheet by z the other also by by z and so on so forth right so, if we were to find the total distance they become z, 2 z, 3 z and so on and so forth right. So, which means that my total my total interaction energy will be the sum the sum of each of these plates. So, that becomes E which is pi times eta square times summation n from 1 to infinity of minus a by 2 times n z to the power 4 plus b times uh, 5 n z to the power 10 right and then there is a multiplication by 2. Notice that this is the same we are summing up the same quantity that we had introduced in our previous expression notice this expression and now instead of this expression I have replaced by z 2 z 3 z and so forth so on so forth 
right. So, inside the sum I have the same expression at different distances and outside I have also introduced a factor of 2 because each sheet, each sheet interacts with the sheet above, interacts above and below, above and below. So, the 2 is to take into account the sheet interaction above it and below it. Otherwise, we have to sum n from minus infinity to plus infinity, right. Okay. So, then this particular summation becomes 2 pi eta square times minus a by z to the power 4, well 2 z to the power 4 which is a constant times summation n from 1 to infinity of 1 to the 1 by n to the power 4 plus b of 5 z to the power 10 times summation uh, n to the power 10 n from 1 to infinity uh, of this quantity. Notice that this is the this particular summation is the famous Riemann zeta function uh, evaluated for n equal to for 4 and the second summation is the zeta function evaluated at 10. Okay. So, so, we know that so, where so again I am just rewriting these ideas. So, where my summation 1 by n to the power m is my Riemann zeta function of m, Riemann zeta function, okay, and my zeta of 4 is pi to the power 4 by 90, I am just plugging in the writing the answers and the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 10 is pi to the power 10 by this quantity 9 3 triple 5. Okay. So, again I have picked up the handbook of mathematical functions and found out these values. Now, finally, when we differentiate this interaction energy with respect to z and set it equal to 0, I see that I see that my z naught this time is going to be b by a b by a times the zeta function at 10 by the zeta function at 4 to the power 1 by 6 right and this gives me after plugging in all the values for b a as described previously this gives me z naught to be 3.37 angstrom. Notice how close is this value to our to the experimentally reported value. So, it turns out that the model had to be had to incorporate certain additional term to realistically uh, to realistically simulate the experiments. So, so I am going to continue my discussion on the modeling of the oscillatory motion of carbon nano rods in my next lecture uh, by slowly building up this example and towards the end of the next lecture I am going to look at the variational form or the Hamilton's formulation of the oscillatory motion of carbon nano rods. So, thank you very much for listening. Thanks a lot.